tribe it is your girl Nadja here and I am back with another video so I am rocking the purple puff thing that you guys saw last time I cut it and shaped it so that I could look like a ponytail because I didn't like the whole the afro look that it was giving me when I tried to wear it as a wig so yeah I just got like this ponytail puff thing going on and I'm kind of fucking with it. If you guys like it, I will leave the link in the description below. This is not sponsored whatsoever. I bought it with my own money. It was cheap as fuck. And the color is like super duper vibrant and I love it. So today we're going to be doing a tribe talk. So we haven't done any of these in a long time. Um, the last time I did this was like when the whole uh, guns in the classroom debate was going on. And I kind of want to do this about more like on pop culture. Bring back my rants a little bit because y'all know your girl loves to rant. So yeah, we're going to do this in layers about like all these popping topics that have been going on right now in my opinion. Again, they're just my opinion. There's a comment section for a reason. You can voice yours. It's all good. We don't, I, I really don't care to argue, but I am about an intellectual debate. So you guys can do that. I don't mind. Uh, so yeah, let's just get right into it. If you are new here, please go ahead and click that subscribe button. Give me a big thumbs up so I can get noticed in this crazy ass world of YouTube. Oh, and for all of you guys noticing my tattoo, I've been just not comfortable sharing it yet because it is still peeling. Like, you know when it's in that ugly peeling stage going on? But, um, can I even, how can I show this? Yeah, this is it. It's a snake. But it's peeling. It looks ugly right now. So I didn't want to flex. But yeah. Things first, I want to talk about the whole Kanye situation, mainly because I feel like I don't know I feel like me and I'm not trying to bring the zodiac signs into it but me being a Gemini I can understand some of the things he's saying but I feel like some of the tactics he's using is very extreme to get the attention that he wants he's basically using this all publicity is good publicity tactic which is like old school PR 101 tactic all publicity is good publicity whether it's bad or good and it's not a coincidence to me that he is using the biggest trigger, which is Trump, to get all this attention on himself around the time where he is supposed to be dropping an album. And it's not surprising to me. I just feel like that's not a very tasteful way to get publicity, especially when you are on the level of Kanye, where you do not even need to go that route about things. There are a ton of memes talking about he's in the sunken place. I'm all for the memes. I am still a Kanye fan. I do not approve I'm sorry like I'm an American um I do not approve of Trump uh I'm in America so I have free speech so I can say that and it's not about what he's doing politically as it is about his bigoted views and some of the things that he said in the past the sexist things and I'm just not for that I don't really like talking about politics on this channel but I know that by me saying I support Kanye regardless of what he's doing I know there are going to be some people that are going to assume that I am okay with what Trump is doing I did not vote for Trump um, I'm not gonna tell y'all who I voted for but just know I did not vote for Trump I see what Kanye is doing and I don't think it's the smartest move I feel really bad for Kid Cudi because this is supposed to be like his comeback because he was supposed to be on Kanye's album as well and that kind of is getting just drowned in all of this political bs i think all of these stunts that kanye is doing is just really unnecessary and when i saw kim kardashian step in being like hey hun um you need to stop like i love you boo uh my husband isn't crazy he's just very outspoken but we do not support trump in this house type shit i feel like the kardashians learn from caitlin by when you are a minority or part of the LGBTQ community and you are openly saying that you're cool with Trump, it's kind of like you get that big wave of backlash, like you're stupid, Trump hates you, why would you like him? And that's what happened to Caitlyn, because Caitlyn was all for Trump. And then as soon as Trump got in office, he started um, taking back the transgender bathroom, started talking shit about the gays, and now Caitlyn looks stupid. You get what I'm saying? So I feel like, Chris Jenner whispered into Kim's ear and was like hey bitch I'm gonna need you to tell your nigga real quick like to stop because we've been through this backlash before and he don't fucking want it I do feel like the money has changed him I really do feel like the money has changed him I feel like Kanye forgot where the fuck he came from all the things that he's doing right now it's the complete opposite of graduation of what he talked about during graduation and like 
I don't know. I am still a fan of Kanye. I love his music, but I just feel like this is a very poor promotional uh, poor promotional vice, whatever the fuck he wants to call it. I just feel like this was very poor promotion. I feel like not all opinions need to be out there. And yeah, that's about it with the Kanye situation. I think the memes are funny as fuck. I saw that Jordan Peele retweeted one of the memes talking about taking notes for Get Out too. Like, I think it's funny as fuck. But at the end of the day, it's like, did he really need to go to that extent? to promote an album that people are already gonna be into because you're fucking Kanye and you have money. And then you have Travis Scott on there. Then you have Kid Cudi on there. Like, you have all these big names on the album that you really did not need to go that route. Like, it makes no sense. And now everybody's calling him a coon and all this stuff. And, and then another thing people need to realize is that there are a lot of people in Hollywood that have lots of money that only support Trump because he is looking out for their money because they're in that tax bracket. There are a lot of people in Hollywood because notice a lot of people hit Kanye up like, hey bruh, I feel you, but you need to keep that on the low low because these are the same people that did vote for Trump because he's helping them with their tax bracket because they got that guapo El Paco, okay? But they would never come out publicly with the shits. They knew that this man was gonna benefit them, but they don't wanna openly come out with it because he has such a negative stigma. And that's why a lot of people are saying that Kanye is disconnected because he has so much money. He doesn't see how us, the average people that are giving these average ass wages, how this dude can't, we can't chill and have dinner with this dude. Like we can't, you can't. Like, that's the thing that he's not understanding. Like, you're not that dude from Chicago anymore. When was the last time anybody's ever seen Kanye in Chicago? Like, pfft. that's all I got to say about day. Next thing that I want to talk about is the whole Chris Brown situation where Chris Brown, I mean, not Chris Brown. What the fuck am I talking about? Chris Brown, really? He did a song with Chris Brown, but no. I'm talking about Bow Wow. Okay, I'm talking about Bow Wow, not Lil Bow Wow, Big Bow Wow, okay? Bow Wow has been all over Twitter saying really suicidal tweets, saying that he wants to kill himself and blah, 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 blah. And I'm gonna break this down as sensitively as I can. For one, as a celebrity, I'm gonna need you to not put triggering content on your Twitter page. And if you are gonna put triggering content like that, I'm gonna need you to put trigger warning before you post a tweet because you have lots of people that follow you and you do not know who is thinking about killing themselves and who is a big fan of you and in their head they're like well shit if Bow Wow kills himself then I might as well go too because I've been thinking about it for a minute you need to be very very careful like on my Twitter I only post shits and giggles okay bitch I will never get emotional or none of that and when I do I make sure I put a trigger warning or I'm like hey I don't really get emotional on this platform but and then I'll go in a little bit but it'll never be anything that could trigger somebody to take action to harm themselves or harm others and I think that somebody with a big platform like his should have a different outlet than Twitter to to have those thoughts on another thing um, that I have a problem with is that the reason why he's saying that he wants to do this is because he feels like he's very well-rounded he's said that he's went around the world eight times he says that he's seen people and been places and he just feels like this is all the life and that there's nothing else to live for so he might as well go. But homeboy, you have a daughter, okay? And I don't have any children, but being a woman, I know, like I have an instinct knowing that the second I give birth to another human being, my shit, is on the back burner okay I have to now build this human being to be the best human being they can be I have to support them I have to groom them to love themselves to treat others with respect like I that is now my job to make sure they could be the best them they can be because even if I've traveled the world eight times and shook all these different people's hands I want my child to be able to do that so instead of saying oh I've done it all fuck it I'm about to kill myself okay you've done it all good for you now build on your child like let them do what you've done take them to the fucking zoo like come on bruh like I've never like I, I okay since we're on the role of mental illness I have bipolar disorder I have type 1 bipolar disorder and I do get low sometimes I get low to the point where 
I do have thoughts, dark thoughts, but I never take action on them. And I feel like it's different when you have type 2 bipolar because I know people with type 2 that will be depressed for fucking months. Like, like months. Like more than half of the year. And they actually do attempt to off themselves, you know, because that depression it sucks like that shit sucks depression ain't shit to fuck with so i get where he's coming in that perspective but just knowing that you have another life to build up i would seek professional help like you said you've done everything and did all this and did all that go to a support group all that glitters is not gold you can have all the money in the world but mental illness is a bitch and that shit will fuck you up I just feel like he needs to go to some support groups or something like that but then as i'm feeling sorry for him i saw him on the breakfast club and he's talking about how he's coming out with an album and the album's name is suicide spelled backwards and now i'm thinking like okay i just spilt all my guts i'm feeling bad for you i'm i'm telling you what you need to do like in my brain you know because i can't knock on bow wow's door and be like hey bro what's up like you know and I see that and it just makes me think back to the whole um, Urban Outfitters and Forever 21 scandal where they were putting mental illnesses on t-shirts trying to make it like edgy or like Hot Topic they did it too trying to make mental illness like edgy and you know stuff like that or like put I'm bipolar or like depression or you know shit like that that's what it made me think of how like I'm like nigga were you even really suicidal or were you just trying to sell this album and to be honest bow wow nobody don't want to hear your music you need to start writing people's music you're not the sound that the youth is listening to today like half the shit my little brother listened to i don't fucking know what's going on the only person out of my brother's generation of music that i actually kind of like because he's different is trippy red but the, bow wow nobody ain't listening to you fam like and the fact that you just did this suicide scam it just makes people who are suicidal look less credible and that's not fair to them because they're actually hurting inside so what do y'all think do y'all think he did this all to just sell an album like pulling a kanye since that's just what everybody the number one pr rule all publicity is good publicity since that's just what everyone is doing do you feel like he's pulling one of those or do you really feel like he was suicidal and this is about to be like a sad sappy album let me know in the let me know in the comments below okay so my next topic is how we need to stop making these okay i need to word this correctly because i got a girl offended the other day about speaking in a certain way because i made a video about people of color at coachella and a snow bunny commented under my video talking about you're being racist towards white people why couldn't you include white people in this video bitch can we have something god damn Y'all didn't include us in y'all little Coachella videos. That's why I made a video for people of color. And I didn't just do black people. I did Asian people, Indian people, Spanish people. Like, damn, girl. Can we have something, sis? So I'm trying to be really careful on how I word this. But you know what? Fuck it. I'm, I told y'all I'm about to be unapologetic now. So fuck it. I'm about to just say it. We as a community mainly black twitter because i've been noticing we've been making a lot of these motherfuckers via twitter and instagram so black instagram black twitter there really isn't a black insta but primarily black twitter and instagram we need to stop making these children and people famous for acting like black people and i don't mean i don't mean black people like i don't mean like african americans i mean like ratchets like niggas like and not even i feel like that's still too normal if anything they're acting like and i don't want to say they're acting like a coon i don't like using that word um what's the word basically projecting ratchetness in the black community and making it seem like that's how all black people act and when they do it and not be when they do it and by them not being black we think it's funny and then we retweet it we, we reblog it we share it we post it and then we say stuff like oh this person needs to be on the ellen show and then they end up on ellen and now y'all mad when y'all put them on ellen like for example the yodeling kid now he is not acting black or nothing like that right but 
He just went to Walmart and he started singing. I will give the yodeling king this. King? The, shit, he could be the yodeling king. I'll give the yodeling king this. At least he actually has a talent and he could sing. So that case doesn't really bother me as much. Fuck his skin color. He wasn't trying to appropriate any type of negative racial stereotype. Like, he was being himself and he just decided to go into Walmart and start singing. He actually has a talent. He could actually sing. So that's why I don't want to throw him into the whole group. But I'm going to partially put him in there because Black Twitter made him famous. They retweeted him, made memes of him, um, kept saying stuff like, oh, put him on Ellen, put him on Ellen. Next thing you know, he's on Ellen. Then next thing you know, he's on Coachella. Like, now this little boy yodeling on airplanes. Like, and y'all over here wondering why when your friend post and and it's just crazy because it's like me for me being from new york i don't see this i live in florida now i don't really see this in florida but i see this all the time whenever i go to new york i will see people my age i'm not that old i'm 22 but people my age with guitars and little drum sets on the side of the street people of color my age and they're you know getting it in and they sound good and like i'll record it or i'll see somebody else recording it or whatever that's also in my age bracket and i keep saying my age because my age bracket uses twitter it's not like somebody in my mother's age bracket who only uses twitter for business like we use twitter as a social media um outlet and we get news and stuff like that from twitter and i didn't see this dude nowhere like we don't ever see any viral stuff so every time i see people of color with the talent on social media specifically twitter i always try my best to retweet it to get it circulating i saw this one girl that was a dj and she dj'd um drake's new song that had came out the lauren hill sample and that shit was dope she barely got any fucking retweets like she got like maybe like a few thousand but i'm like no nah, uh-uh see yodeling boy blew up in a day okay now back to the whole thing well now what made me even start about this topic is Lil Tay I'm telling y'all right now if you retweet Lil Tay or put Lil Tay on your Instagram I'm fucking blocking you because you're an idiot like I'm sorry they're like she she looks so uncomfortable all the time like she makes these videos that don't make any sense Cause it's like, she's talking about, oh, I bought a car, I'm flexing. Bitch, you, you're not even old enough to get a fucking learner's permit. And then it all goes back to the whole Whoa Vicky concept where we know Whoa Vicky's not black, but we allow it cause it's, it's funny and like, you get what I'm saying? We know this nine year old don't got no money. We know this isn't her money, but it, it's funny. So we're gonna allow it. Whenever you see Lil Tay out of character, like when she was hanging out with Chief Keef and all them, this bitch looks shook. And I'm not about to laugh at her because she was looking shook. It's just you're trying to pretend to be all hood and, oh, I'm flexing. I'm the youngest flexer and I got all these, my money, blah, blah, blah. I could pay your whole mom's rent. And she says the same thing every fucking time. Like, I don't get why y'all think this shit is funny. She says the same lines every fucking time. This watch, this watch is your mom's rent. And this bathtub, this bathtub is your mom's rent. And this fucking Honda Sonata is your mom's rent and then every car she talks about is always two hundred thousand dollars like you know that there are more expensive cars out there like you know that right so like it's just it doesn't make any sense to me but when she got in contact with Chief Keith she was looking real uncomfortable because it's like these people mainly these young people that see current black entertainers and how they act on Instagram and they're flexing their bands and they're hopping out their whips and shit they think that that's cute so when they do it on the internet without any other people of color around it's all good and i know that Lil tay is technically a person of color but i'm talking about black people when you're trying to emanate a black person okay and don't get it fucked up i know some real ratchet ass asians out there like look like little mimi she gets a pass okay mimi gets a pass but Lil tay no because mimi acts a certain way online mimi acts like a stereotypical asian person online to make jokes but her everyday life it's my opinion y'all don't gotta agree but mimi's a nigga okay in my opinion so but she acts like an asian girl and be like you want the nails honey like she does in her videos right to make fun of it because she's allowed to do that because she's not appropriating anybody's culture now if i went on my videos and i was doing an asian accent and pretending to be at the nail salon i wouldn't get no fucking retweets <laughs> you get what i'm saying people be like nadja that's fucked up you're appropriating you need to stop 
and there and don't get it fucked up there is a difference between cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation okay look it up i'm not gonna go into that rant but basically Lil Tay went around chief keith she looked fucking shook and i'm not trying to pick on her for being shook she's nine years old and you're around people you're around some chicago ass niggas that kill shit that make songs about killing shit and then there go your mom right in the background trying to fix your hat and shit and they're like yeah spit some shit spit some shit and she's like Lil Tay flexing um whole rent um all up on your rent I'm like somebody beat this little girl ass like why are we making these people famous like can this please die out and then when she has some haters she over here crying talking about guys I'm just trying to make my mom proud and blah 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 really your mom is proud that you running around here calling people niggas and hanging out with gang bangers and shit and rappers because don't get it fucked up some of these rappers still be fucking gang banging bitch like <laughs> like i don't understand how that's making your mom proud what type of endorsements is lil tay getting like let's be real what type of endorsements is she getting what type of endorsements is whoa vicky getting whoa vicky's daddy is rich he's a fucking real estate agent and i will go ahead and spill that tea i do not care he is a real estate agent he is a self-owned he is employed by himself he named a whole fucking uh housing community after whoa vicky victoria something like these and then Lil taste people are rich too look at like who is endorsing y'all for real y'all are just being doing this all for followers because y'all already got money so end of the story let's stop making stupid people famous i've said this in a previous video already let's stop making these dumb ass little kids famous okay and black people stop rewarding this fucking behavior y'all need to start checking this shit because y'all be throwing the 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 racist card and the shit and you know so freely so freely we all do it okay but this is the type of shit that really needs to be handled and i have been seeing some people online saying like hey enough is enough we did it with danielle bergoli we did it with whoa vicky we're not doing it with lil tay this time like enough is fucking enough and i'm proud of those people and i hope that y'all could join this bandwagon because ain't nothing cute about what they doing okay i'm trying to think what else what else my boyfriend just texted me talking about what are you doing i'm filming oh he gets off in six minutes yay i get so excited when my boyfriend gets off work because i'm just like such an introvert now that i do youtube full time I'm trying to think what else is there to talk about what other hot topics let me look on my phone real quick since I do work from home this is like all that I be looking at because yeah because I don't have cable I could get cable if I want to it's just I have a fire stick so I feel like it's kind of like pointless I guess I could talk about this Emily B situation It's really sad though, um, in my opinion, because I know what it's like to be trapped into a, in a relationship where there is abuse, but it's different when you put the abuse in the spotlight because then peop it's embarrassing. Like, it's really embarrassing. And a lot of people were like dogging her because she went to Coachella with Fabulous, but it's like, y'all don't know how many events she probably went to with this man right after she got her ass beat. Like, just because she got her ass beat in, you know, front of all these people, doesn't mean it hasn't happened before. It's just more embarrassing for her. But one thing that I do not understand is like, usually women, we, okay. If you guys don't know, the, I doubt you guys don't know, but Emily B was caught getting hit by Fabulous by some paparazzi or whatever. Fabulous threatened to shoot Emily B's dad in the head for coming to the house, right? Which is completely ridiculous. He's trying to have all that control over that girl by, to the fact she can't even bring her own daddy to, to her house. I know that in my own abusive relationship, the second I brought my daddy into some shit, it's over. It's over. I brought my mother into it earlier and it was still kind of, eh, you know, like I was still seeing him and stuff like that. The second I brought my daddy into it, and yes, I'm 22 years old. I still call my dad, daddy, my daddy. It was over. It was over because if, if I would have even been stupid and tried talking to this dude, my dad would drive his ass down here and beat his ass. Like I 
just feel like as a woman, when you involve your father into that type of thing, that is a symbol of it's over, it's done. Like the, the first man of my life is coming in to check my current man in my life and it's over, right? So that's why I was very, very shocked to see them at Coachella together. But at the same time, I wasn't shocked because she is an abuse victim and it's hard to break those ties when you are married, you do have kids, you don't have a job, he is the breadwinner not have gone to such a public event because I've had situations where my ex was physically abusive to me in front of his mother and I told his mother like look you will never see me again I am done I'm finished my dumb ass went back to him and being around his mother after I went back was the most embarrassing moment of my life so well not of my life but of that point in time of my life so I could only imagine how Emily B must have felt getting her ass beat in front of the whole world and having her nigga pull a gun on her dad in front of the whole world and then go to Coachella and be mocked in front of the whole world and being called weak and all of that shit. She just needs, she needs some therapy. She needs a divorce attorney. She just needs to go. Like she needs to start a Fashion Nova promo or like get a hairline or like not a hairline, but you know, like a hair line or a makeup line or something so that she could be her own boss and get some coins coming in because there is no reason why the only reason you are stuck with a nigga is because he is providing for you i will be fucking damned okay so yeah tell me you guys your opinion on the whole emily b situation i think i'm gonna call this little tribe talks you know finito at this point let me know if you guys want to hear any other topics and stuff like that i'll try to do this at least like once a week or twice a month i haven't really decided yet yeah i will see you guys next time bye the truth will set you free but first it'll piss you off mm -hmm.